DIY sound panels have been massively popular over the last year since people have been setting up music studios at home. I've received a lot of comments asking me what sound insulation material is the best and how I built my panels. So in this video, we're going to test and compare four types of sound insulation, rock wool, fiberglass, acoustic foam, and denim. Before we jump into the test, it's very important to make the distinction between sound, like music and voice, and noise. Acoustical engineering is an advanced branch of engineering that analyzes how sound behaves in a space and how sound waves bounce off walls, floors, and the ceiling. Sound or acoustical treatment is an art, whether it's in a music studio, concert hall, or a cinema. Remember those? There are scientific principles behind the placement of panels and their shape or their thickness. These DIY panels that we build are noise dampeners, not sound panels, technically. They're primarily insulating materials for buildings. Their noise dampening properties are secondary characteristics. They smother the middle and high frequencies and harmonics for music and voice with overabsorption. To test the insulation materials, I bought this Vlicke digital sound level meter off Amazon for $56. I'll link it in the description below. For consistency, we're going to test three inches of insulation, then the noise emitter, and then another three inches of insulation. Apologies in advance for the annoying high-pitched noise that we're going to use to test the insulation materials. It measures around 77.3 decibels. First, we're going to test denim or cotton insulation. This is a very dense product and it's actually used to make sound panels. It costs a dollar and 14 cents per square foot at Home Depot. Two layers or three inches of denim brought the noise down to 75.5 decibels. Another three inches brought it down to 72 decibels. That's a 5.3 decibel drop. Rockwell Safe and Sound is out of stock at my local Home Depot and Lowe's, so I bought some thermofiber slag wool insulation, which has very similar acoustic properties to Rockwell. It costs 94 cents per square foot. Sandwiched between two layers of three inches of Rockwell, the noise level dropped down to 69 decibels. That's an 8.3 decibel difference. Before we test fiberglass and acoustic foam, I need to tell you that this is my first sponsored video. This portion of the video is brought to you by insulationforus.com. Insulation for US is the largest US online retailer for insulation products. They ship nationwide across the US with over 800 locations to ship from via their vast distribution network. They are cheaper than big box retailers and they offer a $60 flat shipping fee on 80% of all their products. Next, we're going to test these 12 inch by 12 inch acoustic foam panels that I bought off Amazon. They arrive vacuum sealed and slowly expand over a couple of days. They cost $1.50 per square foot. While they're very easy to install, they brought the noise level down to only 73.3 decibels, a 4 decibel difference. Lastly, fiberglass, the biggest surprise. I bought a roll for 2x4 walls at Home Depot for 50 cents per square foot. Sandwiched between just two layers, the sound level dropped to 65 decibels, a 12.3 decibel difference. Fiberglass was by far the winner. It was the cheapest and it had the best sound dampening qualities. This test was really surprising to me because everyone talks about the performance of Rockwell sound panels, which is why I built my panels out of them but I could have cut the cost in half by just using fiberglass. There are obvious risks to both materials. I always use eye protection, a mask, and long sleeves because I get angry red bumps if it touches my skin. But once both these materials are wrapped up in fabric, their risks are minimized. My sound panels are 31 inches by 48 and half inches, and they're made out of one by four pine studs back when they were reasonably priced. I cut the studs down to two 47 inch pieces and two 31 inch pieces. The middle brace is 29 and half inches long. The four angled corner braces are 8 inches long. I used glue and a nail gun to assemble the frame and then smoothened it down with an orbital sander. Two pieces of Rockwell insulation friction fit into the frame pretty easily. I bought some felt fabric at Joann's and attached it to the studs with a crown stapler. Hope you found this video useful both for the material you can use and for the method of building panels. This was obviously a very unscientific way of testing performance, but I think it was effective. I'll provide a link to both insulationforus.com as well as my Patreon page in the description. 
Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.